Hello guys, in this video we'll be looking at autosomal DNA results, predicted appearance, predicted traits and illnesses of an Iron Age Iranic person, Saka Iranic individual from Kazakhstan. Here is this individual's predicted phenotype with Minoshakot tool. Minoshakot tool predicted him to have brown eyes, a Greek shaped nose, which Greek nose just means um, a kind of aquiline, long, narrow, uh, a little bit bent outwards, like con con convex nose, you know, and black hair. This is his prediction with a snipper free. Snipper free predicted him to have brown eyes and white skin. Uh, however, there was also a prediction for hair color. I'm not going to post it here because there was only like four SNPs found, so it's not a reliable prediction whatsoever. But when it comes to eye color and skin color, according to snipper free, this individual likely had brown eyes and white skin. This individual did not have derived OXTR, which is the closest we have to a real-life sociopath gene. Uh, now, derived alleles in OXTR are most common in East Asians, and this individual was not an East Asian, at least not fully an East Asian, so it's not that surprising that he did not have the sociopath gene. According to his genotype in DRD2, he was not a no-go learner, and he was also at an increased risk of schizophrenia, at least compared to, you know, Europeans, who tend to have a different genotype, who tend to be no-go learners and have a lower risk of schizophrenia. So this person just had a genotype that is typical for every non-European. According to his genotype, uh, in this variation in, of the MET gene, uh, he had an increased risk of autism. He had an average risk of Crohn's disease. He had a very low risk of type 2 diabetes, a very low risk of schizophrenia, and a very, very low risk of bipolar disorder. He had an average risk of coronary heart disease. Moving on to GED match results, this is his result with Eurogenes K13. Uh, interesting thing to notice is the lack of West Med, East Med, and Red Sea. Uh, I'm not sure why that is, because you'd think that uh, Saka had some West Med admixture, because, you know, Iranic admixture... Uh, carried some farmer, European farmer ancestry. Uh, so why this person doesn't score anything from West Med is not, uh, I can't explain. In single population sharing, this person is closest to Tatars, Chuvash, and Maris. But you have to keep in mind that in Eurogenes K13 Oracle on GED match, there are no uh, reference samples for Bashkirs. So if they had Bashkirs, he would probably be closer to Bashkirs than to Tatars. With that same oracle, he can be modeled as a mixture of South Siberians and Northern Europeans. Here is his result with Eurogenes uh, K15. Once again, we see the same thing as with Eurogenes K13, which is a lack of West Med and a lack of Mediterranean admixture instead of like West, instead he has West Asian admixture. And this is what he scores with the K15 oracle. And by the way, we are running into the same problem as what we had with the K13 oracle, which is the oracle doesn't have a reference coordinate for Bashkirs to compare them with the sample. So if they had Bashkirs, Bashkirs would be number one. This is his result with MDLP K16 Modern. And what's interesting about this result is that he has 8% Indian in his result here, uh, which does, does kind of correlate with Eurogene's results where he had a little bit of South Asian. But it's interesting that this uh, Saka individual had so much South Asian related ancestry. In MDLPK16, uh, he is closest to Bashkirs, uh, Udmurts, and Mari, which is great. It's great that they actually have a Bashkir reference sample on that calculator's oracle. It's very great. I like this calculator because of this. Here is his result with the Pond DNA LK10 ancient calculator. And what's very interesting is the low amount of uh, CHG that he has on this calculator. By the way, uh, there, is, there was only like... 1k or 2k SNPs that were even analyzed for this prediction, so don't take it too seriously. But he's predicted to have a very low amount of CHG, only 20% of CHG. Uh, it's like 6% less than me, and I'm Russian, uh, which is interesting. I, I would expect this individual to have more CHG. And now, if we look at the East Asian related components like uh, Amerindian, Siberian, Beringian, and you add all of them up, that's gonna be like just ballparking it 35%. So it's a pretty significant chunk of ancestry that this person had from East Eurasians. He was like one-third Asian, basically, and two-thirds white. His oracle with this calculator looks like this. But by the way, this calculator also does not have reference points for Bashkirs. And if it did, this person would be closest to Bashkirs. But because they don't have Bashkirs, he's closest to Chuvash. And he can be modeled as a mixture of Chuvash plus some Amerindian or Siberian folks. And here is the sample's uh, result with Eurogenes K36. According to the oracle for this calculator, he was closest to Udmurts and Bashkirs. 
here is his oracle for Eurogene's K36. Now, uh, don't take it too seriously because it's look at this, look at the fit, 13.5. Look at the fit. Come on, that's not a very good prediction. And this is this person's uh, G25 results, which I simulated from Eurogene's K36. Why did I have to simulate them? Uh, I had to simulate them because I just couldn't find this sample on any official spreadsheets floor from Explore Your DNA. This sample was just not on any spreadsheets. Uh, maybe, I, I don't know, maybe Illustrative DNA has it, but I, I was not able to find it on Explore Your DNA, so I just had to sort of make my own G25 coordinates for him. And just out of interest, I wanted to see what this person scores with some ancient calculators using the G25. And he, this is his result, 71% Andronov, also 71% um, Proto-Indo-European, Proto-Aryan actually, Proto-Iranic, Proto-Indic. Uh, and one quarter Amur River, which is like East Asian, and then 4.5% uh, Sarazm in Neolithic, which is like Proto-BMAC. So this person had a little bit of BMAC or BMAC related blood. Now guys, you can download the sample in 23andMe format by following the link in the description. So this is kind of your reward for sticking around and actually listening for all my yapping and uh, going on about the sample. Uh, you can uh, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Leave your comments, uh, suggestions for other videos in the future. Thank you.